Well, a lot of you have requested that I go into more detail about this whole overfilling and scraping the extra lip balm off the tubes. And this one is for you. So let's start with the stats. Today, I need to make 400 lip balms. Tray one is gonna hold 225 tubes and tray two is going to be filled with another 175 tubes. Well, in this case, I'm gonna pop in 180 just in case we need a few extra. Since each tube needs to be filled with five grams of lip balm, I'm going to multiply 400 tubes by five grams for a total of 2,000 grams. And I'll actually add a tiny bit more to account for any spills that might happen along the way because it happens. So for the first tray, we're rocking and rolling. We're pouring everything in. And since it only holds 225 tubes, which requires 1,125 grams of lip balm, I still have lots left in my jar to overfill them so that I can get those nice tops and avoid those concave dips we don't want. If you don't know what I'm talking about, have a look at some of our past videos because we've gone into this quite a bit. So now that it's set, I scrape off all that excess. So the tubes in this tray now contain five grams of lip balm each. But what's with all this on the scraper? That's all the extra that I poured on to make sure we got those nice tops. As for what I'll do with it, it goes back into the pot to be remelted. This doesn't affect the quality of the product since we're melting it really gently over a double boiler. And that's part of the reason why the process can take a while. Now that it's melted, we're gonna get started pouring the second tray. But we have a problem. The jug only contains enough lip balm to fill the tubes to the top. There isn't enough to give them those nice tops that we get when we overfill. Remember, we weighed our recipe to include the exact amount of lip balm we need to fill inside of the tube and not any more to overfill them. That's where my little hat comes in. I'm going to be blocking off some of the tubes as I pour, kind of like pretending that I have a smaller tray. So while I have enough lip balm in the jug to fill 175 tubes, I'm only going to fill a handful of tubes right now so I can overfill them and scrape to get a nice finish. And if you're wondering why my sections are so oddly shaped, it's because I only have certain sizes of these dividers, so I gotta get creative. But you'll see that as I go, the amount of lip balm in my jug gets smaller and smaller. There's always enough to fill the tubes, but the amount of extra to get us that nice finish when I overfill is getting smaller and smaller. But luckily, the sections I'm working with are getting smaller too. After I've gone through this process a few times though, I have to call it quits at some point and decide that it's gonna be my last pour. And what's left at that point will be my waste, as in lip balm not poured into tubes. Normally, I wouldn't pour these last two because oftentimes I risk that I won't be able to fill them all the way to the top, but I'm feeling lucky today, so I decide to try it. That last one isn't really looking great either though. Now, this is what is left as my official waste. I know, I know, you all want me to make little sample pots and give these away to customers and shelters, and I did a whole video explaining why I do not do that. So let's see how much waste this truly did produce. And if you really have something to get all that worked up about. Wow, let's call that 1.3 grams, which is enough to fill less than a third of a five gram tube. I don't know, but I think 1.3 grams of waste on a 2000 gram batch that yielded about 400 lip balms isn't half bad.